everyone, it's Brynn. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. Today I have my November reading wrap up. I read seven books in November, which is pretty typical, but I was only able to read one physical book and that was Not Filmed by Marisha Pessel. I liked this. This was like a suspense thriller and it was centered around this journalist who is investigating the suicide of the daughter of a famous filmmaker. And that filmmaker is famous for some very dark niche horror films. And those films actually started being banned in theaters. And so his films were kind of like, had a cult following and would be showed as night films where you would have to like find the location. Anyway, the journalist's investigation into this suicide is prompted by his history with this filmmaker. He had like a libel suit against him after he was trying to expose him for some uh, dark things he felt that the filmmaker did in the past. Also, this filmmaker has not been seen in public for 30 years. So, a lot going on here. This is a thick book for a thriller. This is almost 600 pages long. And I should say, I gave this book four stars. We get into some like dark magic witchcraft almost things. Our journalist has a couple of interesting sidekicks through this journey. This was really good. I don't know if that was a good description. It's hard for me to describe thrillers because I don't want to give too much away, but I enjoyed this, especially in the October, November months. It was a very atmospheric read. And if you like horror films, you'll probably like this, um, especially towards the like last third of the book. We really get into the film scene. It was pretty good. I'm filming at a different time of day than normal and I feel like my glasses are super glary, but just try to ignore that. The next two books I'm going to talk about are the Kindle books that I read this month. I read the first Zodiac Academy book, The Awakening by Caroline Peckham and Suzanne Valenti. This is a 18 plus kind of Harry Potter-esque feeling series. This first book we follow twins. Their names are Darcy and Tori and they get pulled out of their mortal normal world and they get put into a world of fae. They have powers based on their zodiac signs. So typically you have the elemental power that is associated with your zodiac signs. So water, earth, fire, and air. And we follow these twins as they navigate this new world through an academy. Once the kids in this world turn 18, they awaken their powers and then they go to this school to harness them. Uh, there's like an underlying plot that honestly we didn't get into very much in the first book, um, but I think this fey world is being terrorized by, I think they're called nymphs, and they can like kill the fey and take their powers. I don't know, our girls are still trying to figure out what the heck is going on in this world that they are apparently supposed to rule. Um, this was good. This had a couple of steamy scenes in it. I think this is going to be a very romance heavy, fantasy-esque series. And I'm so excited. Uh, one of my friends has read, there are five, four books of it? No, there are five books of it out right now. And there's a sixth that I believe comes out this month in December. And one of our other friends has picked it up also. So we are just having a really good Zodiac Tom. I gave Zodiac Academy The Awakening four stars. Someone wants to make a YouTube appearance today. And the next Kindle book I read was Too Late by Colleen Hoover. I have loved every Colleen Hoover book I've read this year. I think it's only been three, but I'm so interested in all of her books. They're all so different. Um, this book, Too Late, follows our main character. Well, we actually have three perspectives in this book, which is interesting. So our main female character, her name is Sloan. She's a 20 year old sophomore junior in college, and she is having to live with her drug dealing boyfriend because she has no family support and she has a brother with special needs and she needs her boyfriend who gets his money in very illegal ways to help support him and his care that he needs. So she feels very trapped but she also feels like she just has to stick it out and graduate college and then she can provide a better life for herself and her family. So we follow her as she is in a very abusive, very 
traumatic relationship. We also get her boyfriend Ace's perspective in the story also. And he has a really interesting perspective because he has a history of schizophrenia in his family and you learn that as the story goes on. So it's so interesting to see from his perspective and see the way he is processing the actions that he's doing and justifying them in his head. That's really interesting. And then our third POV is from Carter slash Luke, who is an undercover cop trying to bust Asa and his college drug ring. So there is a bit of a love triangle between Sloan, her boyfriend Asa, and then her new love interest, Carter slash Luke. This was so good, but also trigger warnings for abuse, uh, both physical and sexual abuse. This book covered some difficult topics, but I had such a good time. It was so dramatic. Like if you just want to be dropped into the middle of a adventurous, unhealthy relationship where you are just rooting for everyone to make better choices and get what they want out of life, I would recommend this. I gave this four. I really almost wanted to give it five stars because I had such a good time reading it. I read this in 24 hours. It was so good. The only thing that made me iffy about it was how Ace's story kind of went and how his mental illness was acknowledged but then not really explored more. So that was the only thing that kind of had me iffy but otherwise I loved this. Um, it was so dramatic. It was graphic at times, so there's a warning for you. And now into the audiobooks that I read this month. The first book I finished on Audible was I Can't Make This Up by Kevin Hart. This is a celebrity autobiography. It was really good. I love hearing about people's struggles and what they've done to achieve success and just their takeaways from their experience. This was obviously hilarious. Kevin Hart is a comedian, if you don't know. Very funny. Hearing about his family and him growing up in Philadelphia, it was a really good time. I don't really know what else to say about these biographies, but I gave this one five stars. I actually gave all of these audiobooks I'm going to talk about five stars. They're all nonfiction, and I just typically tend to give those five stars because what am I going to say about someone's life or someone's studies that they do. The next audiobook I finished was David Sedaris's The Best of Me. This is him handpicking his best stories from his previous works. David Sedaris is a humorist and he writes stories. Basically he just keeps a diary and then he transposes the best moments from his diary into stories. They can be from his childhood, they can be from his adulthood and just everything in between. He has lived in America, he's lived in France, he's lived in England, and he's from a family that had six children so he just has a lot going on a lot of um, content <laughs> that he can put into his books these were some of his best stories like I said and I had a great time he reads his audiobooks and does a fabulous job I gave this five stars and then going off that I picked up this was just like a 20 page essay that David Sedaris also did this was themes and variations and this was just him kind of talking about his uh, fans and questions that they have after his speaking events where he'll like read some of his stories and this was really good I mean this was like a 30 minute audiobook it was free it might be free with Amazon and also free with Audible which are like the same company anyway but I gave this five stars also and the last book I finished this month on audio was The Stranger in the Woods by Michael Finkel this was so good. This was about, this is a true story of a man who in his early 20s leaves his life as he knows it and goes and lives in the woods in Maine. And he survives in the woods by frequently stealing food and supplies from local cabins and communities in the Maine wilderness almost. And then he's finally caught and the journalist who writes this book has a correspondence with him as he's in prison. This book was so good. I loved hearing about Chris, I believe is his name. They're calling him the last true hermit because he truly went, um, I believe it was 27 years without talking to another person and just living in the woods by himself, surviving winters and building up his camp. Fascinating story. I gave this five stars. Like I said, I can't give someone's life less than five stars personally that I have come across, but I loved this. I thought the journalist did a great job of 
telling the story from Chris's point of view and seeing the relationship, the relationship they kind of develop throughout their correspondence. This was so good, but at the end, this left me feeling sad because it was just kind of just discussing how someone wants to live their life in a particular way and the way our society is set up today. They basically aren't allowed to do that. And I enjoyed this. I really liked this a lot. It made me want to go camping. And it had really good winter vibes because the winters in Maine are like sub-zero arctic levels of temperature and it was really cool to hear about his way of survival. But all right, those were the seven books that I read this month of November. Let me know in a comment down below what you read this month and if you've read any of these books. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next one.